NFL is hearing the appeal of Saints head coach Sean Payton, also GM Mickey Loomis. That's going on right now. Interesting timing because just out is a new audio tape of former Saints defensive coordinator Greg Williams addressing his defensive players ahead of the Niners playoff game. Now, this is all part of a project. There was a filmmaker, Sean Pamphlon, was in the room while Williams was making the address. This, what you're about to hear, is just a portion, a small portion, of that audio recording. Listen. We've got to do everything in the world to make sure we kill Frank Gore's head. We want him running sideways. We want his head sideways. Little 32. He has no idea what he's in for. We need to find out in the first two series of the game, the little wide receiver number 10 got his congestion. We put away from him right now. We need to decide whether Crabtree wants to be a fake prima donna or he wants to be a tough guy. We need to find him out. He becomes human. We need to decide how many times we can bull rush and we can put Vernon Davis' ankles on those pots. Another thing we're always saying is Vernon has never apologized for the way that you do. If you're in this room, you understand that we don't apologize. Pretty strong stuff for the average NFL fan to hear, but maybe that's commonplace in NFL locker rooms. That's why we're glad we have the two of you here. Jay, you start. What's your reaction to that? Well, first you have to ask yourself the question, is it morally wrong or is it wrong in an NFL setting? Because they're two very different questions. You know, and to the average person, you're thinking from a moral standpoint, but there's many things that go on inside the context of the NFL game that aren't morally right. You're not going to go out there and punch somebody in the face and hit him as hard as you can, you know, and do things that are not only encouraged but rewarded in the NFL. But you have to do it within the context of the game, within the confines of the rule. You know, do I think that it's right to intentionally injure somebody? No. You know, I, I don't think that. Do I think that these kind of speeches, though, can be taken out of context because you're talking about it's Saturday night, it's the night before a game, you're trying to fire your team up, you're trying to send the, the right message to them. You know, do the, is this kind of talk common? Yeah, it, it is. It's absolutely common. It, I've, I've seen speeches that are way more flamboyant than that. You know, that it would be, seem outrageous if you saw in, in a normal public setting what, what goes on and what's said. But you're trying to excite, elevate, get your team ready. Think about a general before sending a group into battle and what he says to them. If we just see his speech, we're going to think it's asinine what he's saying to his, to his soldiers. But well, the intent, it, though, in, in that, war is to kill. Correct. And the intent of this shouldn't be to injure, as I said. You know, but you're also asking guys to go out there and to lay their body in the line and to physically sacrifice themselves and to get up time and time again after taking a physical beating and be willing to go do it again. Yeah. And that takes a special mindset. And as a coach, you have to get your players in the right mindset to go do that. I totally agree. I, I totally agree. And I think the one thing you look at when you, when, you know, first of all, we know how violent this game is. Yeah. And I've been in many locker rooms for over 13 years, and I've heard the speeches. I've heard the rah-rah speeches in defense. Heard worse than that? I've heard a lot of, well, maybe not as bad as, as to that extent, but I've heard a lot of the, you know, let's get going, let's, let's take the body, take the body and the head will fall. Those are, those are normal things that are said right. within a defensive locker room. I think where this one really goes overboard is when, he when Greg Williams specifically starts naming names. When he says, go after Michael Crabtree's ACL. There, there's no room in the game for that. Right. He starts talking about uh, Kyle Williams and going, over, going at his head knowing that he's been concussed over the last couple of weeks. There's no room in the game for that because now you're talking about and – and, and one of the big issues I have with players around the league is, yeah, we, we get this macho attitude about us and all that, but at the same time, you never want to injure a guy and then totally maim him for the rest of his and career. And his career. Or and you, know, you have no idea what you're doing. If, you hurt, if you're going after a guy's ACL, you're not sure if that's going to end his career for good. Right. And that's the issue I had with, with Greg Williams' speech. It's not so much the rah-rah, you know, let's go out and let's be violent and all that. That's, that's heard every week. But yeah. when you start individually naming guys, that's when it goes overboard. But, but uh, let me ask you one question to follow up. 
aren't there many players who know, okay, a quarterback's got an injured ribs. I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit there in yeah. the ribs. Yeah. You know, he, he's got a, a bulky ankle. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to try and tackle him low. Yeah, and that's true. I, I think that, that there's a lot of truth in that also. Knowing Kyle Williams is a little banged up and has been, you're going to go out and try to hit him. But, you know, it's going to be within the framework of the game. But my issue was, and I think it's more specific about when he started talking about Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree doesn't have an ACL injury. So why try to create one? Right now you're injuring. You may be not only taking I him out of the game. To somebody's ACL. I didn't know if it was Crabtree. Crab crab yeah, no, he did. He said but go he after Crabtree. Got that ACL as if it were a problem. It been previous. Go out on the outside of his ACL. Yeah, no, he said, ACL, go, so. go after I, his outside ACL. Yeah, as if it had been previously. And, and you get the injury reports. You yeah, know yeah. where oh, guys are vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. There's guys that are hurt. They're playing through injuries. Every yeah. guy is. So I made a kicker skip, but every guy is playing through injuries. Look, I agree with the, the, the rah-rah spirit of the speech was moving. It moved me. I, I loved it. It was, it was one of the most effective locker room speeches I've heard. And I've been privy to, to some in through your days in Dallas, Wanstead, Jimmy Johnson. But this is very damning evidence against, oh, yeah. against this man and this team. It, because, again, that they've already been busted for bounties, and this is all contributing to the bounty issue. Because I'm, I'm assuming that there were dollar figures on all those references. I don't right? know.